as far as uh, we're continuing this series on vision. And so I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred. The title of the message tonight is Envisioning Your Life Through God's Eyes. That's so important to know what he has in store for you. Um, we received a, a text message from Matthew Pritchett, who's a member of the group, and he was, uh, I believe he had a prophetic word from the Lord that, uh, yeah. and we may hear from him later, that that he saw this group doing great things. Amen. Amen. And I, I certainly agree with, <clears throat> with what he said, that uh, there, things are happening and things are changing, and this group is coming forth, uh, bringing the fire of God. And we're excited about it. We're excited to be a part uh, part of this group and, and thank each of you for, for participating. So tonight we're going to be talking about what God sees for you and sees for your future, your life. And I want to uh, start by saying that all of creation started with what was in God's heart. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Amen. And we haven't plumbed the depths yet of God's heart. And so there's more in there. There's more in God's heart for the nations, uh, for all of the nations. And God, there's more in God's heart for uh, each individual. And, and there's more in God's heart for you. And that's what we're going to be talking about. What, what's in his heart? What is his perspective? And this series is about, um, about being empowered by vision. And I know a lot of people, when, when they hear the concept of vision, they think, well, I'm, I just have everything on my plate that I can handle. Yeah. I'm doing all the tasks that I can handle. And because they're task oriented and, and God doesn't want us to be task oriented, but he wants us to be sons and bringing forth the kingdom in your uh, sphere of influence. And uh, that's what we're, what we want to consider tonight is that we need to be looking at God's heart and what's in God's heart for us. You know, it says that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And so if you plumb in the depths of God and the hearts of, and the heart of God, you will find the word. So the word yeah. is in the heart. And so there are mysteries in the word that relate to nations. And there are mysteries in the word that relate to you and mysteries uh, that relate uh, in his heart that relate to you and relate to your life and your future and about your family and about uh, your area where, where you live and where you have influence. So there are things there and that's what we're uh, going to be talking about. And for example, God had things in his heart for the man Abraham. First, he was Abram, and then he changed, God changed his name to Abraham, father of many nations, because God wanted him to be the father of many nations. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, and Romans 4, 3 says he believed God. He Amen. Believed Amen. what God said, and it was counted, counted. to him or credited him to him for righteousness. And, and we could also say that Abraham believed what was in the heart of God for him. Hallelujah. Because that's Hallelujah. what was in the heart of God for him, that he would become a father of many nations. And when I uh, talked about vision, I, I don't want you to think, well, this is another task you have to accomplish during the day or during the year. No, this is looking at things from a different perspective. It's not about doing more tasks. And I know that people get frustrated uh, when someone talks about doing something else uh, <laughs> because they, they have their day scheduled and filled with tasks to accomplish and they don't feel like they can do anything else. And that's the reason I wanted to address this tonight because this is not about a task. This is about a perspective. And uh, we need the perspective to see uh, what God sees about you. Amen. That's important. 
We want to see what God sees about you. He has great plans for you, and we want to see how to bring those plans to pass. Okay, well, we're excited about the new uh, generation coming forth. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Amen. We're, we're excited about that. These little babies. We've got new babies coming forth, and and uh, they're hearing the word and Amen. bring up a child in the way that uh, yes, the responding should come uh, and uh, he'll grow up and and uh, be strong in the Lord. Amen. And, and Amen. Put him on the right path, and he will continue along that path. Hallelujah. That Hallelujah. is exciting. Okay, so here we have something that's in a God's heart. How do we find out what's in God's heart? Well, 1 Corinthians 10, uh, verses 9 through 11 tells us how to do that. He says that God has things for you uh, that ear has not heard and eye has not seen, but it's in his heart and the Holy Spirit is going to search the mm, deep things. things of his heart and show them to you. Hallelujah. And so he's going to go into the heart of God. And he's going to look in the deep things of the heart of God. But the heart of God is no different than the word of God. And so the Holy Spirit is going to uh, reveal. He's going to search those things out and reveal them to you. So you can find out what is in God's heart and what's in his word for you. And that's going to... Uh, create your future well god created the worlds by the words that yes, he spoke amen and, and you can create your future how do you bring it forth well you bring it forth by speaking out what is in god's heart amen you, you amen. hear his word what the spirit says to you about your life and about your family and and you begin to speak those things out and that is the way you create your future that aligns up with the vision. Mm -hmm. And it's really important to have a vision. And I want to start with a personal uh, testimony uh, about when I was hired uh, here at the university years and years ago, uh, the man that hired me, well, one day I went into him and I told him how my career was going to progress and what it was going to look like uh, over over time. And uh, evidently it must have touched him because after I had been at the uh, university for almost 40 years, I had a retirement celebration and he came back and he told uh, people, uh, this is what Freddie said when I hired him. He said, this this is his the career. This was the career that he that he had. This is what he's going to do over his career. And he told me by the years what was going to happen. Well, it must have must have uh, impacted him because he remembered it all those years. He came back to to my retirement celebration and repeated what I had said to him years before. And he said, not only did he tell me what was going to happen, but that's what happened. Amen. And he did what. Uh, he said he was going to do. Now I'm a visionary, Hallelujah. and I saw I saw my life, my career. I saw it over time, and I was able to tell him. Now that's important um, because there were 15 other people hired at the same time I was. So there's a total of 16 uh, people hired in the unit I was hired in, and there was not another one of those people that was promoted here. Not a single person. I was the only one. <clears throat> but you see, I had a vision of where I was going, and I began to operate. My behavior lined up with my vision. Hallelujah. Who I saw myself being. Woo! You that, need to write that down. Hallelujah. Other people, they just started, well, this is start. How do you start? How do you do? What do you do in this year? And, and then uh, what do we do in the next year? And they got off track and they would they were more intelligent than I was. They were smarter. They were they had more talent than I did. But the thing that I had that they didn't have was I had a vision. 
I had a vision of where I was going to be and I behaved as if I was in that place. Now, how does that apply to you? How does that apply to you? You find out who you are, what your identity is. See, we don't start here on the earth level and, and begin to behave and behave so that we can reach some goal out there. No, you see yourself, your identity, who you are, and you begin to behave uh, in that way. You are the righteousness of God. You behave that way. He who practices righteousness is is righteous. righteous. Glory to God. So you begin not looking at yourself where you are, but where you are intended to be by God, what's in God's heart about you, and you begin behaving out of that situation. That's exactly what I did in my career. I saw where I was going, who I was going to be, in five years, in 10 years, and I began to act and behave out of that identity, not out of my beginning identity, but where I was going. I saw myself out there and I began behaving in that way. And that's how I achieved what I was able to achieve. And the other 15 people, they went astray. They didn't, they didn't stay on, on task. They didn't on track. They didn't stay on track. They, they would do some really wonderful things. They'd get off over here and they'd do something wonderful. They'd go over there and they'd do something wonderful. But it didn't amount to what it needed to amount to. Hallelujah. So vision is very important. And we don't just start from where we are and think, okay, I'll just do a few little things here and there and eventually I may get someplace. No, you, you need to have a vision of where you want to be and then begin behaving uh, as if you're in that place. That's what yeah. that's what uh, the Bible tells us. Okay, Sherry has something. There are many people <clears throat> who get caught up in their daily activities. They get caught up. And so this day passes and the next day passes and the next day passes. And they're not going toward uh, a vision. They're just getting through the day. They're getting all of their lists checked off. But what we're talking about tonight is something that will change your life. It's something, if you will catch hold of this message, because I guarantee you, I have lived with a man for 57 years who is a visionary and who has always had goals and plans. And that's, that's what he thought about, and that's that's what we're still doing. That's what we're still doing. We constantly go before the Lord saying, what else do you want us to do? What is in your heart for us to do? Okay, so let's just think about uh, something that God told Abraham. He said, look to the north, look to the south, look to the east, and look to the west. And whatever you see, you can have it. That's Genesis 13, uh, verses 14 through 15. Whatever you can see. Whatever you can see. And so I'm asking you today, what can you see? Whatever you can see, you can have. That was exactly my case and my situation uh, because I could see down the road and and I had it. I, I began to behave as if I had it and I had it. And that's the same with the spiritual realm. Uh, what do you see about yourself? Do you see yourself sound and whole? Do you see yourself healed? Do you see uh, yourself prosperous? Yeah. Okay. So let's just take that for an example. If you see yourself prosperous, okay. So let's assume that you have a lot of debt right now, or and you don't have much money, and If you see yourself that way, in poverty, in stress, Mm -hmm. if you see yourself not having enough, then you won't give much. You you won't do much. Uh, You you just begin to hoard on to what you have. But if you see yourself prosper, if you see that you are prospering, see, that's your vision. If you see yourself prospering, then you begin to behave Hallelujah. out of that identity. 
that you are prospering. Amen, amen. If you see yourself as a healer, you begin to operate out of that identity. Hallelujah. You begin going to see the sick and laying hands on them and Hallelujah. seeing them recover. How do you see yourself? Now, if you say, well, someday I hope to be a healer. I, I hope the gifts of the spirit begin to operate in me one day. And when they do, I will begin to behave as if they are operating in me. But that's not the right attitude. The attitude and the strategy is how do you see yourself? And it's not just how you see yourself, but how does God see you? And you need to spend time with the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit search the depths of the heart of God. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about 1 Corinthians 2, uh, verses 9 and 10. And let him show you who you are. Show you your identity. And let that become in your heart. Because God had in his heart, before he created this world, Amen. he had a vision of you. He prepared works for you to do. Amen. That's, Amen. That's Ephesians uh, 2. He prepared things for you to do before he prepared the world. So I know he oh, had yeah. you in oh, his heart. Yeah. And so you spend time with the Holy Spirit. Spend time in the word of God. Let him reveal the secret things to, to you. Let him reveal to you what he has placed in you. God has put things in you and let them come forth. And when you begin to see those things, you begin to behave that way, okay? If you see yourself as righteous, begin to practice righteousness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you see yourself prospering, then begin to act as if you're prospering by giving to other people. If you see yourself as a teacher, begin teaching yes. other people. Yes. If, if you see yourself as a healer, begin laying hands on the sick. If you see yourself as one who prophesies, you begin to, to prophesy. prophesy. See how it works? You don't wait until, oh, 20 years from now, and I'm believing every year that I will prophesy every year. So every year goes by and you don't prophesy because you're waiting for the, for the gift to be in operation. But let me tell you, you see yourself prospering. You see yourself prophesying. And then you begin to prophesy. Now you, be, you operate and you behave and your behavior lines up with your identity, Hallelujah. who God says you are. This message Amen. is about how does God see you? This is not about adding tasks to your day. This is about changing your perspective so that you begin to see your life the way God sees it. And you cannot do it on your own. You need a guide. And yeah. the guide that you already have, he's the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. The Holy Spirit is your guide. The Holy Spirit is your teacher. See, this is a very practical message tonight. One that will change your life yes. if you can catch hold of yes. it. Yes, yes. God has things for you to do. He sees you in a way that's different than you've been seeing yourself and the, different than the way you've been behaving because he sees you complete in Jesus Christ. Amen. Woo. Amen. He sees you complete Hallelujah. in Jesus Christ. Well, if you're complete in Jesus Christ, what are you to do? You know, Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. And what did Paul do? Well, we know from Philippians uh, chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, he said, I'm pressing to the goal. Hallelujah. I'm pressing, I'm pressing on. Pressing on to the mark. He, he's got a future in in mind, he because he had, he had written First Corinthians ten, and now in Philippians, he, and so First Corinthians uh, two, I'm sorry, uh, verse ten is where the Holy Spirit searches the deep things of God, because God had re revealed His heart to Paul about His vision, and, and so Paul said in Philippians chapter three, verses thirteen and fourteen, I'm 
pressing mm -hmm. on to the goal. I'm yeah. pressing on to the mark. I, and, and so that's the way we need to be. We need to be imitating Paul like him, like Paul imitated Christ. We need to be pressing to the goal. And what is the goal? To be Christ-like, to be mature in Christ. A and to know what God has in store for you. And that's the goal. Uh, that's the goal. We press into that. We don't press into sports. We don't press into uh, politics. We don't press in. We press into what God has in store for you. That is important. It's important to know what the Holy Spirit is showing you. And, and only you, you've got to find out yourself by spending time with the Holy Spirit, what he's showing you, what your future looks like, and, and you begin to behave out of that position. Amen. That's the perspective that Hallelujah. God has for you. Now, this message is a very simple message. Yes. It's a very straightforward message that it's by the Holy Spirit he reveals to us. Now, there is one point I want to make uh, because I'm, I'm bringing this to conclusion, and that is we have to keep our control uh, out of things, uh, that we're not in controlling. And see, that's the reason I'm talking about we're not, I'm not assigning you tasks. That, that's not what this is about. That's not, this is not putting more tasks on your, uh, on your plate. This is about you finding out what God has in his heart for you, what he's prepared before the foundation of the world and, and begin to walk, begin to walk in it. But there's a really interesting passage in uh, Revelation 12, uh, verse 11. And it says, we overcome him. It's talking about dra the dragon, <clears throat> the devil. We overcome him. How do we do it? Well, there's two do's and one don't. <laughs> two do's and one don't. And most people want to forget about and ignore the don't. And they just focus on the two do's. The two do's <laughs> are we overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb. Amen. And the word of our testimony. That's the two Amen. things to do. And the third one, we love not our life. But I like to put it this way, <laughs> without willpower. I don't get, see, what is willpower? That's my control that's right I, I, i've got to put my hand in things and stir things around and god's not doing things quick enough and god's not doing things the way i want him to so i put my hand in there i, I begin to stir things around and, and see it's either purely god or, or if i bring in humanity uh, into the mixture, then it gets tainted and contaminated. And, and, contaminated. and, and so this word that says, uh, love not your life, that's the word in the Greek, it's psyche. It's where we get psychology from. So it's really soul. And so don't get in your soul involved. Now, I realize that there are people that became mortars and over over history, there were a lot of Christians that were mortared, uh, mm -hmm. and that would certainly this verse would apply. They overcome the they overcame the devil uh, by the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony, and they loved not their life unto the death. But for you and I, we may not face martyrdom, uh, but we do face something though, and that is the tendency to get our will involved, our soulish realm, and see we have to separate. In our soul, there are desires and there is a will. And we have to separate those things. Desires are important and we need to have our desires in line with God. But our will, we have to lay that down and let God's will. See, that's what Jesus did. The, the last garden. thing, the last thing in the garden in Matthew 26, 39, he said, not my will, but your will. Oh, Amen. Yeah, I mean, he's Amen. the son of God. He was the son of God in the garden on his way to the cross. And he still said, not my will. I think that's very important. Not my will, but your will. So if he had said, this is my will to go to the cross, then he would have gotten himself involved. involved. He would have gotten Amen. humanity involved. 
And, and this had to be God. This, this had to be God. And, and he had to go as a man to the cross, but he had to go in purity and in power. He had to go there. And, and so he didn't have his willpower involved that it's going to come out and, and uh, uh, curl like he wanted it to. He had to release his willpower in order to take on God's willpower, I mean, a higher uh, will. Hallelujah. <clears throat> And that's what we have to do. So we overcome him by the blood, blood of, the of the lamb, lamb, by the word of our testimony, without our willpower, without a willpower. And so I, I can put it another way. Uh, you, can, uh, you can lose 10 pounds of weight uh, by the blood of the lamb, by the word of your testimony, without willpower. Well, that sounds like a pretty easy thing to do. Because, see, I found out years ago, that flesh cannot control flesh. Oh, and so man, if, I, if I say, well, okay, I'm just going to eat certain things uh, until I lose 10 pounds, I, I can't control flesh with flesh. You control the flesh with the spirit, with the spirit. Hallelujah. 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 So if you want to overcome an addiction, you, you don't do it by your willpower. It, you, that's already... Uh, by the wayside, you know that if you've got an addiction, you can't control it by your willpower. You control addictions by the spirit. Hallelujah. You overcome it by the blood of the lamb, by the word of your testimony, Amen. without willpower. Yeah. See, that's the, that's the first thing you have to come to realization, that if you've got an addiction, you, your life's already messed up. You haven't been able to control it. You're out of control. Uh, if, if you've got an addiction, and you need the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit to help you overcome addictions. And so if you want to overcome sin, if you want to overcome addictions, if you want to overcome fear, uh, doubt, anxiety, depression, if you want to overcome those things, you do it by the Spirit, by the blood of the Lamb, Amen. by the word of your Amen. testimony. Amen. Okay, so we have, I just want to summarize. We have shown that God has great things in store for you. And you need to spend enough time with the Holy Spirit and in the word of God that he can search those deep things of God and reveal your future to you. Give you a vision of your future. Amen, amen, Glory amen. to God. This is not about Hallelujah. taking on additional tasks. This is about the spirit. You find out what your future is and then you begin behaving out of that identity Amen. of who you are Amen. in Christ. And then you speak out. See, it's the speaking out because the, when you hear by the spirit of God, what God is saying about your identity and who you are and about your future, you begin to speak that out. And that is the word of God. Hallelujah. It's a prophetic word of God. And it comes forth and it has enough power within itself Amen. to bring itself Amen. to pass. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You can't Hallelujah. achieve what you want to achieve on your own. You need the grace of God operating in your life. God has a vision for you that is greater than you can accomplish Amen. on your own. own. Amen. You need the grace of God. And the Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Grace. He needs to be operating <clears throat> in your life. And you begin to speak out what you hear by the Spirit, and you will activate and bring forth and fulfill your vision and the vision for your life for the future. Amen. Thank you for being with us Amen. today. We're going to turn it Amen. over to Amen. Amen. I'm going to open up the floor in, a, in just a few moments. Uh, if you have a comment, if you have something from the Lord to share uh, with any of us, uh, we'll, we're here, we're ready to hear uh, what the Spirit would say uh, unto us, the, the, the body of Christ. And uh, again, I want to thank all of you for, for being with us. Uh, I believe that there is a stirring going on right now. I see a stirring in your hearts. Uh, right now that you uh, are ready to get before the Lord and find out exactly what he has for you uh, to in for the days to come 
And, uh, and that's, that's important because some of you are making decisions right now. You're making decisions that will um, affect your entire life uh, in, the, in the days to come, in the months to come, in the years to come, uh, that you're making uh, those decisions. And so it's important to know uh, exactly what's in God's heart. That really touches me, uh, that, that phrase, what is in God's heart? Uh, because John, the beloved, laid upon the chest of Jesus. And I believe he heard his heart beat. I believe he heard his heart beat, not only in the natural realm, but in the supernatural realm. You know, so often we spend 90% of our time in the natural realm and only 10% in the spiritual realm but it should be just the opposite. In fact, it should be 100% in the supernatural realm. You're not of this world. You're a peculiar people. You're a royal priesthood. You are not of this world and you are not controlled by the elements, listen to me, because this is a word for many of us on this, on this meeting tonight, you are not controlled by the world's economy. You're not controlled by what the world is saying about you. You're not controlled about what the doctors are saying. You're not controlled by what other people are saying about you. You are controlled by the Holy Spirit. He is your guide, your counselor, your helper your teacher. And so that's, that's who we are to be listening to. And in, in order to make those decisions, you need that voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to you and saying, hey, listen, this is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do. And then like Brother Fred said, then begin to act that way. Act that way. If you say, well, I want to I want to see more people healed. I want to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. But so many times that, that religious concept and thinking comes into us that it has to be in a church service. It has to be in a meeting. No, hallelujah. I've gone to the hospital when I haven't known a single person there that was sick. And I was led by the spirit to this room and that room, praying for the sick. See, our, our thinking, our concepts need to be exactly what God is saying. Hallelujah. Because the, the church is everywhere. There are people that are sick everywhere. There are people that need Jesus everywhere. Oh, I want to see people saved. Hallelujah. Well, have you told anybody about Jesus today? I'm just saying your behavior needs to line up with what you say that God has in his heart for you to do. 